Hello everyone, welcome to uh, Securing Your Environment, uh, Intrusion Detection and Intrusion Prevention Systems. Uh, so this week we're going to start looking at uh, the next level of uh, information security. So up to this point we've covered uh, cryptography, we've covered uh, the, the basics of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, we've looked at some, some different types of hardware such as firewall. And uh, this week we're going to look at intrusion detection systems, prevention systems, and exactly how and why that uh, we need to be able to secure an environment. Now whether this is going to be uh, your customer, the company that you work for, or this is going to be, if you're a pen tester, um, much like what I'm doing right now, then uh, this is uh, some, some of the first steps to look at while you're trying to uh, actually look uh, at, a, at a particular company and find out what some of their vulnerabilities are and where you can kind of help them. So let's kind of look at um, defense in depth. So where we are at this point. So uh, here, this is just a basic breakdown of uh, what we're looking at. Uh, so the prevention here is going to be the firewall. This is going to what's going to be on the outside of your perimeter. And I've made reference to uh, the town multiple times as far as a, a large wall surrounding the town and trying to keep it safe. Uh, so this is this is what's going to catch most of your traffic. This is going to catch most of the bad guys. This is what's going to the first layer of security that is exposed to the internet, trying to stop people from coming in. Uh, after that you're going to have this next wall of defense, the next layer of security that's going to be detecting. And this is where your intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems um, are going to be in place. And then finally, your third wall. Um, so just kind of see where this is going to fall into uh, the devices, the firewall, the intrusion detection systems. And then the last one's going to be logging and auditing. If something does make it past your perimeter, and try to think about this, uh, you know, if you're working for an environment that does, uh, you know, uh, make use of cryptography, does make use of firewalls, does make use of uh, you know, trying to meet security best practices. Um, th this is going to be a basic uh, layout of what most net corporate networks are going to look like these days. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump in and start to look at these a little bit more granular. So, you know, we're talking about, I already talked about firewalls already, uh, and we're just going to kind of look at what exactly an intrusion detection system is. So an IDS, uh, for short, is an application um, or, or device that can be used to kind of gather and analyze information that passes across the network or a host. Um, so an IDS is usually designed to, to, to kind of analyze, identify, and, uh, and report on any kind of uh, violations um, that, it no that it's noticing as they're, they're traversing the network. Um, so it, it, and kind of look at how an IDS works. Um, it, it's used to kind of monitor and protect networks by, by uh, uh, look, detecting malicious activity and reporting on it to a group or the, uh, the system administrator. Um, so once these kind of activities uh, are detected, uh, it's going to send, and this is the detection part of it, it's going to send an alert to the administrator. Um, so that's what these IDSs are informed. So if something does make it past the firewall, uh, there's several different ways that it's going to actually detect uh, you know, those, those particular intrusions. Uh, the first one's going to be a, an anomaly-based uh, intrusion detection system, and, and this is a it's going to learn what's normal on your network, and then anything that it sees out of the ordinary, it's going to alert. Uh, then you have what's called a signature-based uh, look for. These are based off of known uh, malware, known, known attacks. Uh, it's going to look for those, and there's actually a signature or a hash that's already uh, pre-configured or a known library full of signatures. Um, that it's going to detect and then send an alert. And then there's also a hybrid that kind of combines the, the best of those characteristics. Um, so in, in regards to kind of the difference between the intrusion detection systems and firewalls, um, you know, firewalls are obviously, you know, like I showed you in the previous slide, they're, they're usually the first line of defense. Um, and, and it can, you know, it combines, some of these firewalls can combine all kinds of different security systems like antivirus, spyware, uh, they can be used for a virtual private network, which we talked about, where you can actually log into the environment, uh, application filtering, uh, and then they will have, uh, at times, intrusion prevention and detection systems actually built into the appliance. A lot of these next generation firewalls, and one of the best examples is Palo Alto firewalls. Let me repeat that. One of the the uh, sort of kind of next generation firewalls that implements an intrusion detection prevention systems uh, is called a Palo Alto firewall. So uh, 
just kind of keep that in mind as we're kind of moving along here. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about intrusion. Uh, and so a set of actions aimed to compromise the security goals, namely integrity, confidentiality, or availability of a computer and network resource. So this is, again, there is specially crafted um, an attack that is makes its way past the firewall. And in some cases, the intrusion detection system can be on the outside of the firewall. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, on the inside. Uh, and there's also intrusion detection systems that can be implemented throughout the internal network if necessary. Uh, so intrusion detection, the process of identifying responding to those intrusion activities. Um, so let's talk about some of the, the types of intrusion. Um, it's an attack, uh, and it's uh, again, its goal is to negatively impact the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Um, some of the most common types of intrusions, uh, physical theft, uh, abuse of privilege, insider threats, and unauthorized access by an outsider. Uh, you know, we had talked about just about uh, physical penetration testing uh, that uh, they're actually trying to uh, make way into an environment in order to steal uh, either that be maybe laptops. Let's say there's a company that holds a lot of insurance information uh, and you know a lot of different clients, social security numbers and and medical information. And these days, uh, medical information is more valuable than uh, credit card information. Um, so that's uh, that's something that you, know, you most companies are always on the lookout for. Uh, so in having intrusion monitoring in place, uh, the main goal is to kind of detect and diagnose the malicious activity, whether that be by the signature base that we talked about, looking for anomalies, um, it's looking for passive techniques. So the typical intrusion detection response is just to basically alert an administrator. Hey, um, we're seeing, you know, the intrusion detection systems will make note of something that's coming in. Uh, that may way that looks very similar to a type of attack, and then that alert will be sent to the administrator, and then the administrator can look at that a little bit thoroughly and find out this is a false positive, or this is actually a uh, malware that's made its way onto the system. Uh, so you want to look out, yeah, again for uh, minimize false positives, and uh, you want to try to uh, two analysis approaches: misuse detection and anomaly detection. So you want to try to see if this is something that is. Uh, an actual legitimate attack, or this is some sort of, some sort of uh, internal misuse. So let's talk about a couple of the attacks that uh, that have made their way um, that we typically see on most networks. So you know, we, again, we're talking about trying to secure your network, but we need to know what we're looking for exactly. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, a lot of you might be familiar with these types of uh, words like script kiddies, uh, joyrider, a mercenary, a nation state backing, and you'll always see these types of attacks. Uh, nine times out of ten, you know, you're, you're going to see uh, script kiddies um, and more joy writers. These people are just kind of looking for uh, exploring, trying to see what they can come up with. Um, but these days, as cybercrime has continued to become more profitable, uh, you're definitely going to see, uh, along with the, the, the mercenary and nation state back, uh, you're going to see, uh, you know, organized crime actually taking advantage of, of these types of things. So this is definitely something that, you know, as is, is cybercrime continues to become even more profitable as the years go by, uh, it's something that corporate networks need to be cognizant of. So there's all types of malicious software out there. There's viruses, worms, backdoors, Trojan horses, uh, user-level root kits, kernel-level root kits, and malware. Uh, we're going we're gonna hit to a, a hit upon a couple of those uh, as we're kind of moving through uh, the lecture here. So let's talk about some of this malicious software. Uh, for instance, viruses and worms, they carry a payload. Um, so normally what you're going to see is Trojan horses and root kits are going to be concealed. Uh, you want, you know, somebody wants to try to get you to uh, you know, interact with this virus in order to load it up onto your system. And it, but it needs to be stealthy so they can take full advantage of it and try to attempt to gain uh, remote control, remote access uh, on your workstation, uh, also known as remote access trojans and bots. Uh, so they want to try to make these covert communications in between them and, you know, after they've uploaded the software uh, so that they can actually uh, gain control and, and get further information, either whether decrypting files or uh, gaining you know, uh, more username and passwords. Um, 
They're also looking for data theft. Key loggers are always something that are really big that uh, an attacker will try to log into your system. And the key logger essentially is what they're going to do is it's going to allow them to anything that's typed on the keyboard uh, to be able to access that. And uh, you know, if you're you know typing in credit card information or something like that, then uh, it's going to make a note of that, and then the attacker can come back later and dump the key logger and look at all the different. Uh, the keys that have been hit and see if there's any kind of pattern to see if their credit cards uh, have been used. Usually you'll have this um, uh, on point of sale systems, you know, inside a company that to take credit cards over the phone. If, you know, you have some a secretary that's or, or administrative assistant or an analyst on the other side that takes those types of credit cards and they can get a key logger officially uh, uh, successfully loaded onto those systems, then they can, you know, attempt to grab those credit card information. Uh, Stack-based stack -based overflow attacks. Um, so the, these really take advantage of poorly written applications. We're not going to dig too much in the over, uh, um, overflow attacks, but we will touch them just briefly. Uh, so basically, it, when a when a call function a function is executing, it it's kind of stores data in the stack in the memory buffer, and and then it's it's actually overwritten, and that particular piece uh, of the program that's overwritten. Uh, the attacker will actually inject their code into it in an attempt to try to get it uh, uh, executed, so they can you know get a backdoor on on the workstation or whatever it may be. So it, lots of uh, software that has this type of vulnerability in it, uh, you'll you'll find this type of uh, attack. Uh, password attacks, uh, distributed denial of service. So. Um, Attacker attempts to, to locate the file within the encrypted passwords, password cracking tools. We're going to do this on one of the hands-on activities. Uh, just kind of look at some of the password cracking, uh, how that's done. Um, so basically, in, in essence, if uh, sensitive files, usernames and passwords are stored on a PC, or in a lot of cases, there's, there's certain types of broadcast uh, attacks that can be conducted against the network. So, for instance, case in point, you know, in order to kind of uh, explain that a little bit further, uh, there are there is a type of protocol that's used on an internal network uh, that allows for uh, computers or workstations to attempt to connect to file shares. So, essentially, what will happen is the uh, the computer will say, send out a broadcast to everybody on the network, say, hey, I'm looking for this particular file server. Can anyone tell me where it is? Um, and what an attacker, if they're, if they're able to be on that network, they can set up a, uh, a spoof to say, hey, that's me. Um, I'm that file share. Now, the, the, the workstation doesn't necessarily have to connect, but what it'll do in an attempt to authenticate is it'll actually send a hashed, everybody remembers hopefully, a hashed version of the username and password, and then that username and password can be uh, captured by an attacker and then taken offline to crack. Uh, distributed denial of service attacks. So this is basically going to be, uh, instead of one person going after a particular website or going after... Uh, a particular server, uh, they'll they can you know basically get a group of people together and try to equal out the the attack onto that server, and then, which is why it's called distributed denial of service, and in, a torrent, in an attempt to make that server uh, unresponsive or actually bring down the web application. So there's also lots of uh, cool tools out there like packet sniffing tools. And this is going to, you know, we, we're just talking about just a little bit about the, the intrusion detection systems. But again, we're, we're trying to focus on what types of attacks are out there. Now, sniffing attacks are a little bit more passive in nature. Um, as everyone saw in the hands-on activity, uh, if, you know, if you have an attacker on your network or you're on the same network as an attacker, using something like Wireshark and even TCP dump, uh, to basically just sniff that traffic, and as you could see in the hands-on activity, is actually able to capture credentials and clear text that they're using something like FTP, Telnet, uh, SNTP, some of those clear text protocols, or HTTP. Um, so once the data is captured, the hacker would have analyzed the contents of the packets, just like you know we did in the hands-on activity, try to capture credentials, look for data that's not encrypted, uh, and, and that's really the, the point of the, the sniffing attacks altogether. Uh, there's IP smoofing attacks, uh, kind of fool the perimeter routers and accepting a packet and spoofed IP addresses. Uh, this is very difficult to trace back to an attacker's node because you can use a series of um, 
of different points. It's usually called like Tor routers and stuff like that. They'll actually conceal your original IP address. Um, so that's that's another type of tool that uh, some of the attackers will use. Session hijacking. Uh, you're starting to deal, starting to dig a little bit more into web applications, which we are going to try to handle some of that uh, closer to the end of the class. Um, so basically, the goal is to try to take on over an ongoing active connection between two nodes on a network. So think of it like this: if uh, someone is, uh, you know, logged into a particular web application, the attacker is tries to get in between the legitimate user and the server in order to. Uh, hijack that particular session. Again, we're going to go over that a little bit more uh, when we get to web applications at closer to the end of the semester. Um, so these are lures and pull attacks. I and mean, again, we're just kind of, kind of trying to go over all the, some of the different types of attacks. You don't know, have to know all these, but definitely be familiar with what they are. Um, so these are uh, network attacks trending towards stealthier attacks. Wait for victims to visit to visit a malicious website. Uh, this is going to be a lot of the social engineering. So the advantage here is that it's not really noisy. Web servers have uh, a stealthy intelligence, and web servers can serve up different attacks. So uh, web-based attacks, phishing, drive-by download, uh, the challenge is attracting a visitor to a malicious site. This is not difficult. Um, I, I know that the company I work for, we still, you know, we get people to try to, uh, you know, send us phishing emails. And if you're not familiar with what phishing is, um, kind of look at it like this. This is a pretty good diagram of what phishing is. So think of it like this. I will uh, buy a domain, a Google domain. I'll go on google.com, look for domains, and I'll purchase one for usually anywhere between 5 and 15 bucks. Um, I will create an email uh, account based off of the domain that I purchased, and I will send a group of people in a, a particular company Say hey, this is the help desk. Uh, you know, we you've been compromised, or uh, we're setting up a new training portal. Go ahead and click on this link, um, and this is going to take you to the new login page. And then you can actually log in and uh, you know make sure that you can log into our new training portal, or whatever. So you can actually spoof uh, a company's website to make it look exactly like theirs. And then so when they they enter in their username and password, they may be redirected to a legitimate site that says, thank you very much. Uh, but in actuality, that the attacker has just gained their username and password. Uh, so this is very important why, you know, to have something like two-factor authentication uh, that we talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago, something you are, something, something you have, and something you know. Okay, so... We, you know, a, just a quick introduction to um, intrusion detection systems, and we kind of looked at some of the attacks. Before we take this next step into uh, the types of attacks that take place on a network and then the types of things that we're looking for and how to kind of secure that and looking at the risk, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and end this video, and we're going to start a, a, another one uh just to kind of you know make sure we break these up into different pieces but i just want you to get a good idea and a firm grasp of uh, what intrusion detection system is and what are the types of attacks that it's trying to uh to stop and then we're going to start looking at uh, how to secure our network so uh all right uh you just go ahead and move on to the second video